Well, hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm gonna be going over how to change the fuel filters on a diesel uh, 175 Alice. And this does have that Perkins engine in it. So I'm gonna go over how to change the primary and the secondary and then get the system bled and get her fired back up. So if that's something that you're interested in seeing, stick around because it's coming up. All right, first things first, we'll go ahead and disconnect the secondary fuel assembly here. And I'm using a funnel to drain out the excess diesel fluid into a bucket. We'll take that apart and we'll take it over here to the bench and then I'll go over exactly what's going on there. All right, so I want to take just a second to kind of go over the fuel filter assembly uh, just to kind of show you how that housing is configured. You've got a bowl down here at the bottom and then this bolt goes through the top of the housing that's still on the tractor and threads into this. The filter is in between this and as you tighten it up, it seals everything up. Uh, it's important that each time you replace your filter, there's a little bitty O-ring on this bolt that is supplied in your filter kit. You need to replace that. And then also on the bottom of the housing, there's another O-ring that needs to be replaced as well. So let me pull these out of the bag. <clears throat> there's our small O-ring. So I'll go ahead and slide this one off. There's our new one, and we've got three different size O-rings for the filter. We'll go ahead and open this filter up here. So the filter is going to set like this. We're going to have one of these down here on the bottom. There's that. And then the other one, there's one with a yellow mark. That's the one that's gonna go up on the top side. It's gonna be like so. That's gonna be inside the bottom of that filter housing. And here's that O-ring there. So let's uh, slide over there at the tractor. So right there is the housing. And right here is the O-ring that I'm talking about. And that one, you can see it's kind of got a little fray in it right there. So let me get a pick and we'll get that out. What you got to do is just get your little pick in there. It'll either tear out or she'll pull out over. Okay. You will take your new one. Make sure it's good and clean. Put it around there like so and that is done all right let's bring the whole system over here and we'll slide it in place some of these housings have drains well, on the bottom this particular one does not all right so what i'd like to do is take this gasket and go ahead and push it up in the top part of the housing. And what you gotta be careful with this is make sure it doesn't roll on you. It needs to stay flat. And if it rolls on you, you'll get a leak. And I can feel that one is rolled right here. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, everything is good and flat. <clears throat> Let me get a lot here so you see. All right, everything's good and flat. You can see that now all the way around the inside of that housing. The housing's good and clean. So at this point, I'm gonna slide my new, um, or old bolt with the new O-ring on it right down through there. And I'm gonna slide my new assembly up in there. I'm going to look from the top side here just to make sure we get up over that O-ring. And I like to line up the filter brand and the number towards the outside. So I'll start threading on my bolt. Okay. 
Okay, it's starting to secure up pretty nicely. We'll go ahead at this point, tighten it down. The tightness of it, you just have to fill it when it's snug. You don't want to over tighten it. You don't want to under tighten it either. That feels pretty good there. It, and that is pretty much it. Not much to it. I know sometimes diesel fuel filters can be a little scary to uh, take on just for the fact of having to try to bleed that system and stuff out. But I won't go through that too. It's really not that big of a deal. It's more important for that injection pump and injectors and that whole fuel system to be protected by having a new filter on than it is to have to try to maybe deal with bleeding it out. So, all right, this one's done on the left side. I've got one on the other side and it's got a water separator on the bottom of it. So the bottom part has glass. Um, so we'll be doing the same thing with that one. All right, this is the filter on the right uh, side of the tractor here. Like I said, it's got a water separator in here and I can see some water in it. Um, it's got a drain down here at the bottom. I'm gonna utilize that on this side. I got me a bucket down here. I'm gonna to try to capture as much of this as I can. <coughs> I'll go ahead and crack loose this bleeder nut up here on the top. So this is the bleeder. When we get all the air out of the filters on both sides, there'll be nothing but fuel coming out of that. So I'm going to go ahead and crack that open. So I want to get some air in there to help drain this out. Got a little bit of junk in there, it looks like. All right, we'll grab our 7 sixteenths. Just crack that loose, just like we did on the other side here. All right, so it appears as though all that's drained down. Move that out of the way. I'm down here on my bucket, I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, little drain plug back in down here at the bottom. We can pull out the old assembly. Here's my little O-ring. <clears throat> I'm just gonna break the seal loose. She hasn't been off in a while, so. Get it all over my floor. Okay, man, this thing has a lot. A lot of rust in it. It's actually not rust, it's actually dirt. Look at all that. All right. Well, I'm glad we're getting these old filters off of here and getting something new because that's a lot of stuff. All right. So this one's a little bit different on the bottom part. You can see it's much longer. you a better view here. Here, I'm just hanging over my bucket. So we've got a longer base right here, as you can see, and then that part right there on the bottom, and this is glass. So 
to be real careful when you separate that. I'm just gonna go ahead and flip this thing upside down. Dump out any fuel that's left in there. Now this one's got, this has the uh, three um, gaskets on that. And if you remember on that last filter, we had a spare. That's, they put three in there so that if you got that water separator, you can replace this one on the bottom. All right, so let's slide over to the bench and get this thing cleaned up and assembled. And then we'll come back over and we'll stick it on there. All right, so I took some carburetor cleaner and I cleaned up the bowl and my base and got it ready for reassembly. I grabbed my Wix filter. It's a 33166. Here's the filter number. So as I mentioned earlier, you got three of the larger O-rings, gaskets I should say. They're all the same size. We're gonna have one down here on the bottom. Make sure that it stays flat. Then the filter set down over all that. Oh, I'm sorry, that's your filter, your water separator. And then we're gonna have another gasket that's gonna ride in here. This is probably the trickiest one because it likes to move around from that being glass. Just try to work it in there, be patient. And again, it'll need to stay flat, just like the rest of them. All right, so I got that. Then the last one is gonna go up into the filter housing. And just like we did on the other one, all this will slide together, get tightened in with that bolt. And then you're ready for the fuel to be turned back on. All right, so back over to the filter housing. We'll pull this O-ring off, <clears throat> just like we did on the other side. I'm gonna wipe that down just to make sure we don't have any junk left up in there. I didn't mention this on the other one, but you always want to make sure that there's not a gasket left up there in that groove <clears throat> before you put your new filter on, because that'll really mess you up. I'll go ahead and put my new O-ring on down here. Here's my top gasket. Get it started in there. Make sure it's flat. It naturally wants to roll on you, so just take your time. And then once you get it started flat, just use your fingernail or your thumb. Just work it around. It's gonna get nice and tight when you get right around to the edge. You can see that's all flat all the way around through there. All right, thing looks good with that. Let's go ahead and grab our assembly. 
go ahead and slide that in place. But before I do that, I want to make sure to you know, replace that O-ring. All right, so I got my new filter assembly. Let's stick that up in there like so. Start our bolt with the new O-ring on it. Now priming the system is our next step. I'm gonna turn the fuel on underneath the tank here. All right, fuel is all the way on. Got a little primer right here. Just gonna start drawing that fuel out. I've got the bleeder nut open. Goes right on top there. <clears throat> Get you a view of both things here. So right down here is your primer pump. So you can see, I think you can see in there, there's fuel coming in. Yeah, you can see it. Keep doing this till we draw it in, and then we're gonna fill this up, and we're gonna have nothing but diesel fuel coming out of the top. <coughs> when I get to that point, I'll go ahead and put this bolt back in there. Okay, you see the diesel fuel starting to squirt out of the top here. I'm gonna keep doing that until I see nothing but diesel. And I don't see any air. No bubbles. I'm getting pretty close. It's moving down the line over to the other side. So we'll go ahead and tighten this up. Try to catch as much fluid as you can so it doesn't throw you off. You know, if it falls down on your filter, you could think that you've got a leak somewhere when you actually don't. Okay, so now at this point, this is my primary filter. It's heading over towards the secondary filter, which is on the other side. And what we're gonna need to do next is uh, find our bleeder on the pump. All right, so we're gonna bleed uh, the air out of the pump. So we're gonna take this one off first. And it looks like it's about full. We got fluid running out of it. So I was just hitting the primer on the other side over there. Get that one tightened back up. Crack this top one. Looks like we're full there too, but I'm gonna go ahead and get our uh, primer over here again. So you saw that squirting out all over the place, so we're good there. Thank <laughs> you. 
dry up some of this mess. We're gonna hop up there on the tractor. And, and hopefully she'll fire it. All right, so if you're unable to get it to start after you bleed the air out on the injection pump bleeders, uh, the next step you'll wanna do is crack open your injector lines, uh, which are going into each injector right here. There's four of those. I disconnected uh, three out of the four just because they were easy to get to. And then you'll turn the engine over until you start seeing a fluid uh, come out of these uh, lines right here. Um, basically what that's doing is just getting that air popped out here instead of trying to throw it through the injector. Once you get to that point, then uh, you should be able to hear the motor start to try to fire up and then you can tighten those back up. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. It hasn't started yet, but it should be, uh, it should be starting here in just a second. So let's give it a shot. Okay, that is it. That's going to conclude the video of how to change out your fuel filters. Um, most of the time, you can just pull the bleeders loose and get it fired back up, but this was kind of a good uh, scenario here. That way, if it doesn't work that way for you, all you got to do is crack those injectors open, get the air out of the lines, and uh, then she'll start up. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, share this video, and stick around. There's more coming up.